now my good side, but I'm gonna replace that king pin too, so I'm hoping this is all going to come out easy. That is There's a slot well, that keeps, it, keeps the kingpin in. So now let's see how lucky I am. Ta-da! 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 There it is. Spindle out. I figured this side wasn't going to be as easy. But so far, I finally found my torch and I've been eating this. And then I've been taking this. And, oh my gosh! No, no pressure at all now. I can do my hand now. So, as you can see, it's out that far. So I'm gonna try, try and get it. Looks like I may have heated the this up too much because this feels really hot so I'm gonna let a fan cool it down while I go clean parts for the other side back to doing these removing these so on the truck I did let me see that I did grind them down pretty smooth but I still can't see the ring so you should see the ring of where this is the stud for this is and then you should be able to hit it through, hopefully. I might have to torch this a little bit just to warm it up. But. Oh, there it is. It's out. God, it was took so hard to beat it out. It was actually frozen on the bushy inside the steering knuckle, not the, not there, not where you're looking at right now on the axle. 11 16 socket is pretty much the perfect size to knock these bushings out. So. And there it is. Oh. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a difference here. It's kind of flat right here. And it, this is rounded. This is the bottom, that's the top. So. It looks like it's offset a little bit from center, so it doesn't make a difference which way you put it. I probably should have bought some new grease fittings, but I think these will be okay. And then the these will just go in here. I'm going to, oops, first before I do that, I have a little hone for honing. Uh, wheel cylinders out. I haven't used any of these tools for years. I haven't had an old vehicle for a long time. So. That's pretty much it. Just enough to, just enough to oops, clean it up. So when you're putting the new bushings back in. I want to make sure, I don't know if you can see that, but the groove, it can go in both ways. So you want to make sure that groove lines up with the grease fit. I know you probably already know that, but I'm just going to say it again. So, these go in very tight. Things, uh, you know, nice. 
like that. Flush like that. So, torsion, obviously. That goes there, flat side down. And as you can see, there's lots of play. So, this thick one came out of the top. I'm going to see if I have one that'll match in this box. So, I just wanted to show you this because there's not a whole lot of info, but. The knuckle sits on the, and this goes on the uh, axle. So the bottom side gets this in this order. The cup, see how the cup that goes down. And then one of the bearings, and then we put uh, bearings, shims, the brass, a steel shim, and then the, another one of the brass ones. And these are smaller than the than the other shims. She I don't have one here to show you, but they're a little smaller in diameter on the outside. So you'll know which ones are which. So you stack them together like that. Brass, shim, brass down, in the cup, cup down, and it goes right there like that. Okay? So, so and then you just shim the top. Uh, to take up the rest of the gap and I'm told it doesn't have to be like snug because you want it loose so it turns all the weight's gonna be riding on this stuff here so real quick I just wanted to show you something there's a website called chevy.oldcarmanualproject.com and they digitized all the Chevy manuals so if you can't find a shop manual and you need to find quick reference that's where you go off the so, you slide this in, flat part down, put that in there. Or put it in before, I guess. And then that's how it goes, just like that. And then it says it needs 5,000 clearance. So, as I said, you stack them that way. But you gotta grease, there's a little grooves in here, so I, you gotta put some grease in here. This will sit, and I'm sure the grease from the the grease from the grease in this will probably work its way up in there too. So, okay. So, and I figured out I'm gonna need a good. Yeah, that's the original front end. So it's 63 years old. So there's a lot of gaps. I took an old shim from the, the old setup, and that pretty much takes out most of the play so I've got enough to do both sides and that's how I'm gonna do it right there also I'm gonna mark the end of the shaft to locate that even though that number is almost straight with that shaft but I'm still gonna I'm still gonna mark it. So here's the new pin. Put some grease on it, and it goes that way, front to back. And there we go. It's tapered, so it only goes in one way. And then over here, we'll put the lock nut and stuff on it, and we'll be ready to go. Looks good. No up and down play. That's perfect. You want to double check that your bushings didn't move past the hole. See these caps? You, you, pre, you pre, hammer those in to keep the grease in. Although mine didn't have them. And a trick to removing them is to drill a hole in the center of it and then stick a screwdriver or something hook it to pry it out of there if you get stuck with one. Yeah. 
I'm gonna head over to Viva Las Vegas for a little bit. Go see the Delta Bombers. No play, nice and smooth. Put the grease fittings in, greased, caps on. These we can tighten on top. These will wait because we have to put the brackets on. So. Just so you know, there's a lock washer on this side. I'll let you see that if you can. But lock washers are on this side right there. So, in case you're wondering where the lock washer is. So I wanted you to see this side, the driver's side, the bracket, sorry about the camera work again, but see the bracket there? It only goes on in this position. You cannot do it like I did on the other side. So it's got to fit over the... the... Okay, so yeah. now to the part where I put the new one inch tie rod with new tie rod ends. New stop. So with the help of my lovely assistant here, I'm going to measure out 54 inches, because that's what the other one is at, just to get it in close before I take it in for the front of the line. Hold that right here in the center of that. Perfect. When we do these normally, they go from the top. Okay? Uh, when you do them, if you put a drop axle on, they want you to do it from the bottom. So, get it where it's supposed to be. There we go. Okay, there's the drag link. I'm gonna put this in here. Like so, and like so. Okay, that's something you gotta be careful with. When you take the balls out of here, don't grind too much off. Uh, like I did. I've got enough, this is tight, but now see the cotter pin's not exactly in a slot. So, I don't have any that size, but, cause you have to grind that, when you do that ball, you gotta grind the mushroom off the back side, to press it out right here, I mean, on here. So, don't make that mistake. I made it, don't make that one. Now I'm going to put everything back together. I didn't do a video of it, but I put the new taper bearings in. So, put a roller bearing kit, tapered roller bearing kit in. And that's not the hub moving, that's the drum moving because I 
I took the rivets out so now I can change the brakes without having to remove the hub. Okay, done. Just gonna grease and uh, go for a ride.